Creating a custom railing for the railing tool requires several pieces, such as the rails, possibly posts and balustrades, and possibly panels. These are created individually, making a kit of parts, and then they can be assembled various ways and in different combinations to create numerous custom railings. In this video, we will get started on our kit of parts by creating a parametric glass panel. This is an easy one to start with and can be used on so many different railing styles. Now the parametric panels will be stored in a cell library. So we'll start by creating a new cell library in our work set. This could also be created in the workspace or in an organization data set. I'll switch over to the drawing tab and open the cell manager. To create a new library, I simply select File, New. I will name the new library Railing Panels Project and save the new library. It might be a good idea to note where that library is being saved. Note it is in my standards cell folder in my project work set. Now I prefer to work directly in the cell library, which is actually just a DGN file. So I'm going to simply navigate to the new file or library that I just created. Note that this file currently has one default model. Each cell in this library will require its own model. So we're going to start by creating a template for a typical railing panel in the default model, and then we have a starting point for each new cell. So let me set up my view windows. And then I'm going to switch over to the modeling workflow. I'm going to start by creating some construction geometry for the parametric panel. So I'm going to set my level to default with whatever symbology I want to use. And I will also set my active class to construction. I'm going to start by using the smart line tool to draw a closed rectangular shape. I'll start at the 00, zero origin and work in the front plane now exact size is not important, but the shape should be rectangular and roughly the size of a railing panel. Once I have a closed shape, I will go to the Constraints tab and select the Auto Constrain tool. This will constrain the rectangle with parallel sides and one perpendicular corner. So the 00, zero origin of this model will be the origin of the parametric panel. The railing tool understands this to be the lower left corner of the panel. So I need to maintain this by setting a fixed constraint on the geometry at this point. I will select the lower left vertex of line one at the 000 origin. Make sure that you see the crosshairs of the vertex so that you are fixing the vertex and not the direction of the line. This now fixes the position of this vertex at the 00, zero origin, which will be the origin of the cell. Again, using the Fix tool from the Constraints tab, I'm going to constrain line 4 by selecting the line, not a vertex or midpoint, and this constrains the direction of that line. You want to maintain the verticals of the panel as verticals, whereas the horizontals will be allowed to slope so that this panel can be used on a ramp or a stair railing. Now we will add dimensional constraints using variables. I'll open the variables dialog. From the item types pull down, I will select some predefined variables that align with the railing properties by selecting railing parametric balusters. I'll start by placing a bi-element dimensional constraint on the vertical side of the rectangle. When I select the side and place the dimension, a pick list will open and I can select the height variable. Use Enter to accept. Next, I will place a distance constraint between the two vertical sides. And for this one, I will select length. 
The next constraint I want to place is the angle at the lower left of the panel. Now, the angle variable is actually the angle between the horizontal floor plane and the bottom of the rail. We want to constrain the angle to the vertical, so we actually want to use a value that is the complement of this angle. So for that, we will create a second variable. Simply select New and give the new variable a name. This variable type needs to be set to an angle, and then we will define it with an expression. That expression is 90 minus the angle variable, so that whatever that angle is set to, our angle will be the complement of it. Now, before we can add that angle constraint to the model, we need to remove the perpendicular constraint that is currently on the shape. Now I will select the angle constraint and create an angle between the lower edge and the left edge and set the angle to be the local variable that I created. Now let's test our geometry by changing some of the variables. Looks like everything is working, so we have the panel template. Now that we've created a parametric template for railing panels, we can create a couple of simple panels. I'll start with the simple glass panel. I'm going to create a copy of this model and keep this model as a template for future panels. First, I'm going to make a change to the properties. On the cell tab, I want to make sure that the model can be placed as a cell and that the cell type is set to parametric. Now I will copy this model and name the new model or cell panel glass. I'm going to change my active level to A floor handrail. I'm not selecting a family in part because that will be applied in the railing settings. And it also means we could use this same panel with different part information on it. I do want to make sure I set the element class back to primary now because I will be modeling the geometry that I want to actually see in the model. I'm going to use the construction profile to extrude a solid glass panel. So I'll go to the solids tab and select the extrude tool. I'll use the active attributes, keep the original, and toggle on parametric. So the distance of the extrusion could be set to the thickness variable by selecting the variable icon. However, I do want to extrude this in both directions so that the origin remains at the center line of the panel. But this means I would end up with twice the intended thickness. So I either need to create a second variable that calculates half the thickness, or I can simply hard code a standard thickness for a typical glass panel. So I will remove the variable and simply put in a value of 10 millimeters. Now I simply need to select the profile and accept to create the solid for the panel. It is always a good check to turn off constructions in the view attributes and make sure that what remains is the geometry that you actually want to see in your railing panel. So now we have the first panel in our kit of parts, a simple glass panel. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.